Hello, good afternoon. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, so we, we've seen, uh, I really like context-specific, country-specific studies, but here we will, we will zoom out and focus on the, on the whole Africa. Uh, so this is a joint work with Luisito Bertinelli and Rama, uh, Rana uh, Komapai from uh, University of Luxembourg. And uh, I need to acknowledge the support from the World Bank and uh, UNHCR under the program Preventing Conflict and Promoting a Social Cohesion in Forced Displacement uh, Context. So the question we are asking uh, is simply to know how do refugees affect conflict through one particular channel, which is changing uh, ethnic uh, diversity. Uh, and we, our, our contribution is twofold. First of all, uh, there is a large literature on uh, the relationship between ethnic diversity and economic development in general, but in particular related to conflict. Uh, and certainly the, the seminal papers, uh, both from a theoretical point of view and empirical point of view, are the papers from Esteban and Ray uh, and co-authors. Um, and basically what, what they say is that um, you need to distinguish ethnic fractionalization from ethnic polarization. So to make it short, ethnic fractionalization is the probability that two individuals would uh, belong to two different groups, right? So the, the index will be maximized when you have a lot of groups to the, to the extreme, theoretically, when you have uh, one group per person, right? Polarization is different. It captures antagonism between groups, right? And it will ma be maximized when you have two distant, group, two distant groups uh, of similar size, right? So uh, it, there are really two different uh, measures. And what Esteban and Ray are saying is that basically polarization uh, should increase conflict, while uh, fractionalization should matter less because it increases coordination cost. Uh, so, um, so far, the, the evidence has been mainly uh, using cross-country analysis. Uh, we see two limits in that, right? One is that this type of, of index, they, they move very slowly uh, over time, so you lack a bit of time variation. And also, it's more difficult to, to control for unobserved characteristics. So in this paper, what we are going to, to, to do is exploiting time-varying uh, diversity indices at the subnational level induced by refugees' inflows. Uh, so the second contribution is that we contribute to the li uh, recent literature that has assessed the, the impact of forced migration on uh, hosting societies. Uh, so the, the, this literature has, uh, has looked at, at uh, a lot of incomes, and we can discuss that. But regarding conflict, uh, Christopher mentioned a bit this literature. My reading of the most recent evidence by Yang Yang Zhu and um, uh, Sharver is basically that there is no impact, direct impact of refugees on conflict. And there is a more recent paper showing a very short-lived impact. So what our paper is showing is that it does not contradict at all this, these findings. It's just saying that in the particular case where it changes ethnic composition, refugees may actually exacerbate conflicts when it increases polarization and reduce conflict when it increases fractionalization, right? Um, so uh, what we are doing, it's easier to explain you the construction of the data sets. It's a bit complex, but let me give you the intuition. So we are using uh, available data from the Afrobarometer right, uh, for 23 countries, right? So we have all the uh, clusters, if you want the villages, right, of the Afrobarometer. Then we create buffer around each cluster, and we count to some extent either the conflict incidence or the conflict intensity. Um, and basically from the Afrobarometer, we can compute the diversity indices, so fractionalization and polarization. Okay, so, so far there is no refugees. Then basically, we, we introduce uh, a data set on uh, refugee camps in Africa from um, 2005 to 2016. So we have the exact location of the refugee camps, but what is interesting for this paper, we have also the composition of these camps, age composition, country of origin, and combined with the ethnic power relation, right, we can approximate for the ethnic composition within camp, right? So, now we, we are going to recompute the diversity indices, fractionalization index, polarization index, including the uh, changes in ethnic composition induced by annual flows of refugees, right? 
at the camp level, okay? Uh, okay, I dropped that, okay? So from there, it, you should more or less see what, what we want to do. So we follow uh, the game theory contest model uh, between groups by Esteban and Ray, right? And we are going to try to explain uh, whether the incidence or the intensity of conflict, right, in one particular cluster J in your T is influenced by the refugee corrected ethnicity indices, so fractionalization index, polarization index, controlling for the presence of refugees. Uh, we are going to control for unobserved characteristics using uh, cluster fixed effect and your fixed effect and controlling for climatic uh, anomalies, all right? So this is uh, a simple OLS uh, estimation. Of course, um, one concern we may have, right, is uh, that uh, refugees self-select location according to ethnic characteristics. So I'm going to argue that um, that, that, that's really the, the most important is the selection with respect to ethnic composition. And a priori, it's quite difficult to know actually how it's going to affect ethnic polarization or ethnic fractionalization. There is no clear conjecture on that. Um, so what we are going to do is we are going to apply a gravity model uh, estimated with PPML, uh, where we are, we are going to predict what the number of people, right, from one particular ethnic groups moving from one location to another in one particular moment in time. And we will recompute the diversity in this and use that as an instrumental variable, All right? Okay, so the main results, um, as you can see in the first two columns, we are using the standard fractionalization and polarization index, right? There is no uh, significant result which suggests, you know, that there is very little variation uh, there. In column three and four, we introduce this corrected diversity indices, right? And as expected, we do find a positive impact from polarization, right? And a negative impact from fractionalization, controlling or not for the presence of refugees, controlling or not for climatic, um, climatic um, anomalies, right? So just to give you a, a sense of the magnitude of the results, right? A one standard deviation increase in polarization will increase the risk of conflict by five uh, percentage points, which is about 10% at the mean, all right? And interestingly, it's quite similar to what, what you have found in the literature regarding the size of the effect from natural resources, from uh, uh, prices, uh, from uh, uh, external shocks like climatic shocks, right? So it's quite si sizable as an effect. And um, we do not find any significant correlation, I insist correlation, uh, for the, the presence of refugees, okay? Uh, so, uh, we do quite a lot of robustness checks. Um, uh, so, first of all, we look at different type of conflict. What our result seems to suggest is that it's mainly driven by violent conflict, right? Uh, but it's also uh, uh, valid for intensity, but we have to say it's more robust for polarization rather than fractionalization. We do a bunch of robustness checks, you know, there is a lot of work in matching ethnic, ethnic groups, so we do some uh, alternative way to, to match them. We also change the buffer around each cluster from 40 to 120 kilometers. Uh, there are some new things that are not including, uh, included in the paper, sorry, uh, Arzu. Uh, so, for example, uh, we control for conflict spillover using the distance to the border times the time fixed effect. Something which is, I think, interesting is that so far we did not, we, we assume that all groups are different, right? So now what we have done now, and we are changing the whole paper, is we introduce intergroup distances, right? So using linguistic, um, linguistic uh, distance, right, between groups. Uh, and we can also show that the results are pretty similar if we aggregate the data at the regional level rather than working uh, at the cluster level. So um, I'm not going to enter too much into details, but for the instrumental variables, we do find um, uh, similar results, right, uh, when you instrument. Um, the, the coefficient for polarization is actually higher, suggesting that the OLS estimate is uh, uh, underestimating uh, the, the effect. Uh, and uh, so uh, I'm running to my conclusion. Oh, okay, so uh, I'm even faster than, uh, okay. But so I think what I want to, I want to insist on one thing, right? 
uh, our result should not be uh, misunderstood in the sense that refugee per se uh, do not exacerbate conflict, right? Uh, we do not contradict what has been found, for example, by Yang Yang Zhu and, and Shaver. But we show that in the particular case where ethnic polarization increases, the risk of conflict exacerbates and the, the opposite for fractionalization. Uh, I, I didn't take the time to show you that, but we also um, confirm this result using individual data from the Afrobarometer, right? Uh, using uh, physical assault or interpersonal violence uh, as a dependent variable. And so we are still working on that, but it's quite interesting to see that it's not related to uh, other outcomes like uh, ethnic attachment, generalized trust, trust in neighbors or institutional trust, which tend to suggest that we are more in the Esteban and Ray framework than uh, in other type of framework. And maybe from a policy point of view, it's quite interesting to observe that this heterogeneous, uh, this is um, partly true when you disaggregate uh, between unemployed and employed people. So unemployed people are partly uh, likely to participate, to, to um, uh, report physical assault, right? When, um, uh, okay, when you use uh, individual data. So policy conclusion, to, to be honest, that's not the paper with the strongest policy conclusion, right, compared to others. Uh, but uh, there, I think there are quite a lot of specific intervention uh, that, for example, the World Bank tries to promote to enhance social cohesion between the host and, and, the, and the refugees, uh, which is uh, welcome. But certainly there might be a, a need to target this type of intervention to highly polarized uh, hosting areas. Uh, and... Uh, Maybe there is a need to map systematically or collect data on ethnic diversity uh, among the refugees and those uh, to, to, to follow, actually to be much more context specific than what I give you today. Right. Thank you very much.